like to see an instrument is an instrument that shows that it's well kept for a long period of time in good condition and is well cared for. But you can see that it's been around, that it's had a past history. One of the most common ways that people get into this profession these days is to go to school. Well, that's not the way I did it. <laughs> Many years ago, I used to play in rock bands and I used to repair guitars for friends. From that, I found a job accidentally when I walked into a shop to get parts repairing guitars and started working with a violin maker there. I was out of the rock band within six months and never, never to come back to it. What is special is that you have a lot of different things that usually in, in, in one uh, unique profession doesn't come together. Here we are selling very ancient pieces of art, in fact, that were made 300 years ago or 200 years ago. One violin is given to, to me, it's my responsibility until the end. So I'm doing everything. I'm doing the cleaning, re-gluing, uh, I have to uh, adjust some pieces of wood and also retouch the varnish. Generally with a repair on an instrument like this, we want to leave as much original wood as possible so that people in the future have material to work with and it, it also is better for the integrity of the instrument. It's typical on this instrument, we are redoing a lot of repairs that didn't hold or got too old or were not very well done. So it's more restoration than repairs because we are not satisfied by the look and the sound of one repair and we're redoing it. We're working for a sound that's the best we can get out of that instrument. Violins are very personal in sound. What one player might love, another one will hate. And they can both be great sounding instruments. It has to be adjusted perfectly to their sound and their playing style. The real value in these instruments is that they have been around for centuries and have been used and loved and played for hundreds of years. It's something that's been around and you want to keep around and it's something you want to keep in as original shape as possible. This is a uh, Stradivarius uh, made by Antonio Stradivari in 1690. It's a work of art. We determined that this particular instrument had some real difficult problems in the closing of the cracks that uh, I have not encountered before, and I had to find new solutions for that. I consider myself a restorer and not a maker. Making, you may break something, so what? You make a new one. And instruments like Stradivarius, you can't do that. <laughs> For repairs, I think it's m much more elaborated now than it was at the time. We have seen repairs done in the 18th century that are really very fast. They have no reverence for the instrument. So if there is a small crack on the top, for example, they would change it and that's it. Uh, we try to preserve much more, of course. A big part of the working on the better instruments is finding out how not to disturb what original work is there and how not to change what the maker's intentions were, how to let the natural age come through. With the value of these, the sentimental, artistic, and emotional value that's invested in these instruments, it takes a lot of uh, feeling. It's a big responsibility that takes a different mindset when doing it. I feel quite honored by the fact that I get to work on these instruments, instruments that are loved by lots and lots of people. Sometimes it's, it's very stressful because uh, it's very important, and, uh, but it's very interesting too. This has developed into a very fine career for me. I've worked up over the 20 years or so that I've been doing instrument repair and working on better instruments, moving to better shops. I've been, been able to see a lot and that's been very interesting. So it's a different type of work that you need to take a lot more time with and uh, a lot more care.